people don't think racism exists within Britain and in the UK. And I think this is a very good way to basically show people in general, like, what people go, what black people go through on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, I think resurfacing of the Black Lives Matter movement, it really shows people's ignorance and people that tend to not think racism is an issue is because they haven't directly experienced it. I do think people sometimes feel that there isn't racism here, but I feel like it's kind of down to what you see as racist as well. Whether it's an incident, small or big, they, those things can still be racist. And then it's not just down to small incidences, it's down to um, workplace culture or um, society and how the system works against us as well. Of the law. Why are they above the law? It's Why does it seem that the law is to have our opportunities, the same opportunities that happen for everybody around? Are you going to challenge your boss if he says something racist in passing? Are you going to do those things? Because that's how you disrupt the system. The awards are best in the institution that I held by the are inherently racist. It's a good thing to How was your how was your experience growing up in secondary school? I can't like my distance. I don't actually think it like impacted my academics. Um, my academic ability hasn't been undermined. Secondary school and primary school. I did go to quite a black secondary school. Like Faisal, um, like we we went to schools deeper into Essex. So like the deeper you get into Essex, the more white predominated it is. When I was in primary school. All the smart kids in our year were black. I wouldn't say um, I was kind of pushed back. I've made an active effort to make sure that I couldn't be on the mind. Black. Same with my secondary school, the smartest girl in our year was a black girl. I went to predominantly black schools. Actually, can I go back? In secondary school, uh, our class was always on class report. I, we, we did have incidences where people were racist. I've definitely seen it in play with other students. Within educational um, institutions, they don't really think yeah. about the subconscious bias that they have with cliques. And sometimes that is very much influenced by skin colour. There were like 11 black people, so it was like literally being the one percent. Well, trouble in school is an interesting one. In my school, like, they definitely like stereotype certain people as like just less able. Maybe the only time that I've ever kind of experienced it was maybe during like my English lessons. I've always been a goody two shoes. Anyone that knows me knows I hate getting in trouble. I would say in sixth form, there was just times where teachers did look out, look a bit down on me sometimes. The teacher would always mark me a bit lower. When I went to sixth form now, oh my gosh. I felt pressurised to suppress my blackness. There have been a few times I've got in trouble at school that stuck out to me. Like they always think you're just slightly less able. Like the accent, I don't know, people sometimes undermine that. It just, it, it connotes like a low socioeconomic status. Initially it was like a white teacher, then we switched over to um, Asian teacher. And it felt like I was just fighting for my education and I never had to feel that before. When she started teaching me and when I started giving her essays, my marks suddenly went up by like a, like a crazy amount. Like the one time I got in trouble, I have made worse on my skin colour, even though I never actually... Like I can think of so many more scenarios of people like in my school that were white just being almost like let off with their predicted grades. Like it would be a thing where you would definitely be looked at so much differently. Like certain recognition would have been given. And they're treating you evidently different to your white count, count, um, your white peers. Even when you think you're good enough, like your skin colour is always there, like whether you like it or not. I remember one time I went to sixth form and I saw this guy had the confederate, is a confederate flag. 
the confederate flag on his car just putting his middle finger up at me and my friends and i was just like this stuff still like it sounds so stupid this stuff still exists in 2020 like whenever there's whenever there's an issue of racial injustice brought they, they always like to sweep it under the carpet one example that just like strikes to me is like the fact that we had to like we had to be fight literally we fought with not fought but like we had to really put up a good case to do like a black history month showcase um, i would say that our sits on council is definitely very divided in terms of race um, whenever we try to put any events um, there was a lot of contention and um, a lot of back and forth for us to fight for events that we thought was also important it's like when it went through so many like it was sort of like we had to do like a business deal negotiation i i personally haven't been stereotyped but i've had my brothers and like my cousins and like people close to me stereotyped if i had like a teacher who was being unserious or a teacher that wasn't like helping me in the way that i wanted them to help me i'll be called aggressive because we're just trying to like celebrate like our black history and stuff and even then like it wasn't really supported on board by the teachers that like, had to take a lot of negotiation from the get-go, this multicultural day wasn't easy to have. Um, people, the white students in the city council, basically kept saying no to the multicultural day. Um, My mum came to the end of end of year as, um, kind of awards awards giving, wearing traditional Nigerian cloth. And one of the other parents made a joke saying, "Is this woman come to sell something?" I remember coming to like a teacher's office, one of like the head teacher's offices and we complained about a teacher and then me and my friend were there. So as the years got on in my school more black more black people started to come and that's when the stereotypes arrived. And then instead of answering that and helping us and advising us she said well I would understand why you guys got in trouble. That's when because they were so different let's say it was a thing where they were definitely perceived to be like thugs. Because you three look like, you three would have been so intimidating, you guys look like a gang. And I came to now hand out brochures for the event. This was a couple of days before the event. And I went to my form, and um, usually I'm late for form, but for once I was early. We're always, it's always, we were always, we were almost afraid to speak about it because we knew that if we spoke, we'd be known as the people who cried racist. There was not one time that my grades dropped like dramatically in that school. There's one student in my class, um, a white student. He looked at it and said, "What am I meant to do with this? Am I meant to dress up as a slave master?" But they just said, eh, "You know, I don't think you're gonna make the grades to get into Warwick Blah Blah if you stay, or if you do get the grades, they're not gonna be what you want. That was the point." And I stopped, but I was so angry in what he said, and but I was also speechless that he said something like that. I remember people saying that, mm, they're just being honest, but then at the same time, with the same breath, when it was other students that were not black, it was like, oh yeah, you can get those grades. And there's been lots of times in my life where um, I've experienced covert forms of discriminatory behaviour or racism. There's definitely a discrepancy about how someone of ethnic minority background is going to see your ability versus someone who is not and I think that's just a lack of understanding. I felt let down by the form tutor and my classmates because everybody knew what was said was wrong but nobody spoke up. <laughs> Auric and racism. Hmm that's actually really interesting. This is an interesting topic. My sixth form is exactly like Warwick. Like I think it's just a microcosm of it. At Warwick, no, I've never actually encountered or had really many encounters. And it's a thing where like people like that are not black, they don't, they really do not want to interact with you on this campus. Like some do, but like it's quite rare. I cannot lie. When I came to Warwick, I didn't even expect to see that much black people there. Like black people are very much a minority in this country. Like my flatmate said, like. I don't think he said, I think he said like this is the first time he saw black people and got to uni or like the second time or something like that. I know in my course I was one of four black people out of my whole, as in the whole department, like of first year, literally four of us. And to my friends, like where they would have like um, a meeting or get together and within hours, not even within hours, within like 
a few like yeah let's say like two or three hours like security campus security would be called and it would just be like oh uh, duh, 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 you need to shut this down or you need to be quiet duh, 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 duh. whereas like campus security being called at any situation like we're scary like do you know what i mean like we're not actually scary like i'm just trying to be me i don't know i don't really i have not really heard of that kind of thing with white counterparts obviously with my flat and stuff like there were no there were no black people but i kind of just expected it but more like you just actually feel like they're just signing up like i'll be walking by like i'm actually scared of campus security for no reason i do nothing like i'm a law-abiding citizen recently literally like two weeks ago um, i was doing a temp job at a restaurant and it was like a really really posh restaurant we were basically all doing the same thing and then and i remember my parents just telling me that we would have got to the places where we are now so much quicker if we weren't black they sent home four black girls and they left the white people to continue to work when we were all doing the same thing and the co-worker like i had my natural hair out and they kept touching they kept touching my hair you were so much less likely to be employed like if you just had like like an African sounding name or like a Muslim sounding name and stuff like that. But it's just like, no, some people just aren't really willing to make a change because they're so stuck to their mindsets, which is very scary, but yeah. Introducing two black people in the workplace just because you think that they're going to get along, that just, uh, that just bugs me so much that. Why, why would you just go and grab someone's hair? For like a black person to get promoted, like they almost have to like play the system and basically like i've sort of just come to the realization that perhaps almost once again like suppress their blackness and act as if that's not them not given the same opportunities because of the color of, this, of our skin like that's really disheartening even if i'm just as qualified as someone my skin color might be a reason why i'm not accepted in my sex call please just understand or try and understand that as a black kid we have to do 10 times more. This is always something that comes out about sometimes. It's like, oh, do I have to act white today kind of thing so I can get this role? Or the like, converse of that, I might just be accepted because of my skin colour because, you know, like, affirmative action. We want to, you know, increase diversity. So it's like... A white person might have to do two or three placements before they actually get into the paid career. Whereas us, like, we have to do 2,000 and we, and we still won't get paid, like... People should just give people the respect they deserve. You have this British accent, but you don't feel like you belong here. I grew up first in Thamesmead, South East, which is kind of where I am now. But as soon as you leave, like, the areas that are, um, where there's not enough people that look like you. Midway through secondary school, I moved to Kent. I think like when I go to go on holiday, definitely like a lot of stairs. You kind of get this feeling of like, yeah, I'm not belonging here. I just felt more of an outsider. And I think I was still quite a young teen then, so I didn't really know how to come out of my shell. I was just getting a takeaway on the street in Edinburgh and a car sped past me and shouted the N-word at me. Someone just drives by like in a van and it says effing monkeys. The place I received the most stairs was when I went to Germany with my parents. Certain, literally certain places in America still have no blacks on the side of this, like on the front of the shop side. One time I was like, I was like with my friends and there, there was like two guys among us and like four girls and we were on the DLR and literally just the looks i don't even know like we weren't even talking that was the funny thing we weren't even talking i was m minding my own business and these people felt they had to say something to me small stuff in school as well of just like those two people in the n-word or like um just <sighs> well, they come up to you thinking you are some sort of special something and it's just like it's kind of, it's very scary to see. I was with my friends and we were going into a club. Although I was still coming into London where there was, um, like I was still with my friends and that. I into the club, even people who were wearing shorts and wearing like similar things to me, except me. Um, I did, in my own like area and neighborhood, I wasn't as comfortable as I was when I lived um, in Southeast. You have this identity crisis kind of thing as a black British person. They even back home, they don't recognize you as your own.
I, this is how I think of it. Like most people are in defense mode. Most people are in like you know I'm trying to do better for myself. I'm trying to do better for my kids. So anything that gets in that way, perhaps like mental health or anything that could perce- like let the world perceive you in a different way or like let the institution perceive you in a different way is sort of disregarded. I was trying so hard to be perfect that I forgot who I was and I didn't do stuff for me. I was doing stuff to appease like the white gay, so to speak. So whenever I'd see black people just being themselves, a lot of the times I would feel as though they were letting the team down, which is unfair because everyone should have the right to be an individual in their own right. But for me, at a young age, I felt like I had to speak a certain way, I had to dress a certain way, and I had to suppress my own personality in order to fit like the perfect black man image. But obviously, that, that's not what life is about. Life's about being your true self. I would say that because of lockdown, lockdown has really caused a lot of people to like reflect. So, yeah, I, I would say the different versions basically to answer your question long roundabout, but I've grown up both ethnically diverse and not diverse, and the not diverse at times did come up with very intimidating and very isolating. But I think it's just a thing to push me out of my shell. And once I came out of my shell, I'm lucky to find people that respected me basically or me basically and it's created this togetherness this idea of unity so like we're moving forward and we finally have like you know a bit of support from people that aren't just afro-caribbean people that don't necessarily understand our experiences but they're saying yeah i stand together with these afro-caribbeans i stand together with ethnic minorities for something that's completely wrong for for those who are not black it's always important to keep on asking like you know what is the right way to say things because sometimes you just don't know and yeah. you know there's one thing not known but if you know that you, if you know you don't know if you know that you lack knowledge in a certain area it's that's your responsibility to ask me as a black person it's not my job to educate a white person when they're in the wrong and educate them on the history of black people and how they've been enslaved and they've been tortured and um, suffered as a result of white people and it is my history but they also need to be aware of their ancestors history and the role that their ancestors play overall my feelings are it's very scary to see that people still think in those formula formulaic um old-fashioned ignorant ways but i'm really like anti-ignorance at the end of the day like and it's something i've developed like more like in six women coming to university like where i've just been more exposed to racism like and like i hope what people are doing now is actually educating themselves to the fact that if not more than america britain's past is marred with segregation that was too deep there was no black people going to work there was no there was not even a, there was just, like a black person going to russell group university would only be a dream by looking back and acknowledging the fact that actually there was a part that this country had to play then we can approach the future more um with more wisdom things are improving to round it all up like be you like don't forget to be yourself don't suppress like who you are like not only just like your blackness but just other things as well just in a position to speak up yeah like you say, always share your opportunities. Just like those small steps give me hope that like, you know, tomorrow's gonna be a bit better than today was. We're not a threat, we're not, you know, we're not uneducated. We are amazing, beautiful black people and we should be treated as such. Welcome people, uh, my name is Wale. Um, I don't even know how I'm going to start, but obviously I'm here to talk about, I guess, my personal experience um, growing up black in Britain. Um, I think one thing I've, I've realised, and I think one thing which I, and the same thing which I think also in a way defines at least a black experience, at least for myself and maybe for a few of my friends, maybe a lot of my friends, maybe for a lot of people, is that 
it's an experience which is sort of defined by having to have multiple lenses in which you view every single situation. I feel like because of the fact that racism is so covert, over, it's so hidden. <laughs> so, I don't miss up. so hidden. Um, I think it then makes it hard sometimes to even gauge your experience of racism because it's hard to identify which like which experiences fall into which camp you might decide that the threshold between objectivity and racial lens is here but actually every teacher that you'd come across was seeing you under a racial lens um jobs wise i wouldn't know like I, i've got rejected from many many jobs um is it because i'm black probably like, i don't like i couldn't tell you because i haven't been able to you know research the other side or live the other side to to, to, to say and um, one thing that is very clear though is the way that black people are demonized in the media and thus the stereotypes that um are held between non-black people um obviously the violence predatory knife crime black on black crime um even the idea that london is like the epicenter epicenter i don't know if it's the word but london is the center of crime because you know the black on black crime the black single mothers the black ex and there's just lies to be honest yeah, i remember I was watching a video by carla who was saying that the interesting about the uk pretty us as well but the uk is that you are made to feel like your race itself is the barrier between achieving what you can achieve in the uk um i do feel like the real issue is class but they tell you that it's race, you know, they will tell you that it's black on black crime. They will tell you that, you know, oh, because there's so much black people in this estate, it shows that black people are, you know, inherently uh, violent. But then obviously, as Carla would say, and I guess as when you did research, you'll see that if you control for essentially all the, uh, the what's the word, all the, um, not signifiers, but I guess all the measures in which you can measure being working class by race is not <laughs> really a factor but again they won't tell you that what i mean by at least my myself personally i think a lot of people can attest to this like the idea of like you just know it but you brush it off is that at least within black boys right <laughs> it's a known joke right like and i want to say joke i mean i don't mean joke as in it's not true but joke as in like you make humor out of it that if you're to date someone that's not black the chances are it's going to be stressful when you meet their parents you know like it's it's a, like if, if if my friend is dating someone who's Pakistani, for example, like like as soon as we mention the parents, we know it's gonna be long, and we can make a joke out of it, like oh, I didn't want to see you never on the table. Like we can make jokes about it, right? But it, it's a truth, like, and I think while many black people have grown to have um, grown to have thick skin over such issues imagine if we didn't have to and i think that's a sad thing like imagine gen- like having no fears when you're meeting a partner's parents apart from maybe that oh i'm gonna scare him so he knows not to mess with my daughter but imagine genuinely having no fears like imagine genuinely applying for a job and not feeling like when they see your name they're gonna reject you imagine genuinely applying for housing and not feeling like when they ask where you're from ethnically and you say, oh, I don't know, I'm Pakistani. I said Pakistani already, that Nigerian, right? That they're gonna now suddenly impose cooking laws that you can't cook this and you can't, and you should cook that. You know, like, I'm, like imagine, <laughs> like imagine genuinely buying a new car and not being prepared to get pulled over because everyone's going to doubt that you could actually pay for that car. Wow, you can grow thick skin and you can laugh about it and you can, you know, you can forget it. When you really think about it, like when you really like, when you really realise that not everyone lives the way you do, I think that's the most heartbreaking thing. Um, and I think that that probably is something that, that's also a big part of the black experience being in, um, being in the UK, that there, there are points where you realise that the things that you thought were normal aren't normal. You know, the fact that your parents always encourage you to push at the GP because they, will not, they won't take your illness seriously isn't just because the NHS is underfunded, it's because they're black. Those are some heartbreaking moments, you know, because it's like the like the, the world is just not what you thought it was, you know, especially if you because especially if you just grow up 
knowing that people are racist, but then you just grow up, you grow up just, I guess, the way everyone's meant to grow up. You just believe in people, you know? You're just like, oh, yeah, like, I like you because you're funny and you have match attacks. I don't expect you to not dislike me because I'm black. Like, you, you, that's not the way you think until you're forced to think like that. We were just, you know, doing our thing, and we just got so many stares. Like, oh, it's a bit scary when, like, you go on holiday and someone mistakes you for perhaps a famous person, and you're just like, what world are you living in? I don't know. It's really interesting to see, and like, you could. I feel like you could definitely like clearly see that the like racism, like the most smallest things, even sport in this country. So, yeah, I don't know. That was quite off topic, but. What to other people? Oh, my mom's calling me. Oh my god. I think I'll record it. I don't pick up the phone. I'm gonna have to mute myself. Very sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say that again. When it came to the black student, it's, it's always, uh, he's troublesome. He's always, uh, he's doing this. He's just being a bad student. There was never any like sympathy or. Or oh, delete your emails. I'll uh, just quickly go on my camera up there and put my camera down. Keep going. Sorry. No, yeah, you should be sorry, mate. Like, it's not acceptable. It's not on. It's just not. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I must have been at Roots. And I must have been itchy. <laughs> I must have been in someone's kitchen. We'll get on to Roots I must have been in someone's kitchen. And then... Um, no, I went to Brampton Manor Academy. That's kind of known like the, the Twitter school kind of thing. But the school was basically full of black ac academic excellence. You should know better. Know, know better. better. You should know better. In terms of teachers, I remember when I was applying to Oxford, my. Uh, my housemaster at the time, I mean, he had the good intentions, but he did say, I know they're trying hard to step up their BAME um, students. Or offensive or anything. But, yeah. oh wait, sorry, just one second. Let me stop recording. Place out. I'll be back with the hazmat for the next round. We was trying to protest and the fires broke out. Look out for the secret agents, they be planted in the crowd. Set a civil unrest, but you sleep so sound like you don't hear the screams when we catching beat down. Stand quiet when they're killing niggas, but you speak loud when we ride. Got opinions coming from a place of privilege. Sicker than the COVID, how they did them on the ground. Speaking of the COVID, is it still going around? Why won't you tell me about the looting? What's that really all about? Cause they throw away black lives like paper towels plus unemployment rate. What, 40 million now? Kill them down in broad day might never see a trial we just want to break chains like slaves in the south started in the north end but we in the downtown right cops try to block now we got a showdown down. Like, 